This is George. He lived in an obscene, overwhelming jungle where murder is the norm, and although he could not help it, he was a murderer too. Still, he was a good little monkey, and always very curious. One day, an intruder from society appeared in the jungle. What a nice little monkey, he thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground, and George is lured out of hiding by the hat, an alien trinket of unimaginable cultural significance. George quickly learns a hard lesson about desire, as his adventure with the hat leads to his immediate captivity. Later, aboard a big ship, the man in the yellow hat explained to George about the big zoo in the big city where he was taking the monkey, and he promised him that he would like it there. Now don't get into trouble, said the man. George promised to be good, but it is easy for little monkeys to forget. On the deck he found some seagulls. He was not unfamiliar with birds, but overwhelmed by the newness of the experience, George attempted to fly like the birds he saw, with predictably disastrous results. Nothing in the brutal primeval jungle could prepare George for the terrible, vast uncaringness of the sea. Upon being rescued and pulled to the boat, a veritable school of fish issued forth from his lungs, as if even the fishes longed for something smaller and more manageable than the oceans. Even a little monkey's lungs seemed safer and more homey. Finally, they arrived in the big city. In the city, George puts on airs, trying to live like a man, but he is rendered a buffoon, a clown in his silly costume. Even though he has a big brain and opposable thumbs, he has to know that he will always be seen as inferior by his human counterparts. No amount of effort will change that. Ah yes, the telephone. Meant to bridge great distances, what has it actually done than make us more lonesome? Nevertheless, George is seduced by the ostensible ease of the nefarious device. Ding-a-ling, ding a ling a ling George had telephoned the fire station. They thought it was a real fire. No fire, exclaims the fire chief. Only a nutty little monkey. Angered, the firemen take action. In short order, a monkey has bested seven adult men. This should give you a dim view of human potential. A grotesque Laurel and Hardy style duo finally captured George. They told him, We will have to put you where you can't do any more harm. But is it really George's fault? Or is it the man in the yellow hat's fault for taking an agent of chaos out of the wilderness and trying against all hope to civilize him? With jungle cunning, George makes a daring escape. And what does the fat man get for his troubles? Nothing but a broken jar, and to be laughed at by mousies. Back in society, even an unspoiled mind like George's cannot resist human materialism, and he decides he must have the balloons. <whistles> the saying goes, curiosity killed the cat. In this tale, it seems we might substitute cat with monkey. George holds tight to the balloons, lest he plummet to the hustle and bustle of human streets below. The people are momentarily shocked out of their daily stupor by the sight of a balloon-riding monkey. Finally, and at great public expense, George is captured and returned to the man in the yellow hat. Restitution is made for the balloons. And at long last, George is given to the zoo, his fish-out-of-water nightmare finally coming to an end. George is thrilled with his new surroundings. But one cannot help but wonder whether a creature of the true jungle can find actual happiness in a facsimile such as the zoo, or whether his and the other animals' terrible nature will someday overcome the walls and attack human society from within. This has been Curious George. I'm Werner Herzog. Good night, Liebchen. <laughs>